Welcome back to the GG Over Easy Podcast. My name is Blue Westlow here with Mr. Fruit and our hobby V. Today we're talking about a whole lot of different things. What was that? Isn't I... this like isn't this like it's paper? Like, well, yeah, it's just one. Ah! It's just one. I see it makes everyone. Like a little, makes a little heart. I see every single person. Oh, that's why they do that? I see yeah. everyone do that. And it I don't know why it triggers me so much. Everyone for for audio listeners, it's that the K pop heart that people do. It's just everyone I takes pictures that. and they do that and it just uh, i don't know why i hate it so much. just do that yeah. just do the just do heart hands man don't just do the don't do the little i hate it i i want you i want you to know little little k-pop heart fingers i hate you <laughs> all right well audio <laughs> listeners uh just know that it's cringe uh we talk about quite a few things uh we talk about the new valve game leak uh mr fruit gives us his thoughts on furiosa and well spoiler free furiosa and a couple other movies and what yeah. he thinks we about get a them. new in mr addition, fruit list of movies mr fruit is yeah. now a rating scale member <laughs> talk a little about x defiant and how fruit and rob are apparently boomers now and yeah. hate the kids for playing a certain way uh Good we problem. talk about uh neil Druckmann being kind of cringe as usual and we get into a pretty nice deep saucy q a so if you guys like all of that stick around we all have bad habits mine was the kind you think you're doing so well without and then you find out with your friends that you're all reaching for their bad habits and you feel that urge to not be left out and ask to borrow one of theirs what if I was to tell you there's a better alternative that helps you kick your bad habit in an enjoyable way, something you can take out with you? That's right. I'm talking about Fume. Fume is an award-winning flavored air device. Flavored air isn't like vaping. If vapor was compared to sticky soda, Fume cores are closer to herbal teas. Fume has delicious flavors to choose from like crisp mint and orange vanilla. Orange vanilla is my absolute favorite. It tastes so good. My favorite thing, too, is it's made to fidget with. It calms my anxiety with magnets, snaps, and clicks. Fume has served over 300,000 customers, and you can be their next success story. For a limited time, use our code GG to get a free gift with your journey pack. Head to tryfume.com. That's tryfum.com, and use code GG. Thank you, Fume, for helping me with my bad habits. So 230. Just firing 69. from the hip. 69. 229, on the hip, I think. Bro. I think yeah, it was close. Sure. It was 229, yeah. 230. I just shot my shot. Close enough. Close Close back to this week's episode. Um, before we get started, I just want to say we're looking at a new VIP. I'm kind of moving up in the world. You? Oh. Yeah. Really? I've, I've made my way into a select group of people. Wow, so you're finally getting your YouTube flowers. Like, you're finally making videos with PewDiePie and Markiplier. Okay. Right. Uh, what's crazy, though, is they're also sort of bygones of different... They're, they're a little past. bit forgotten era. Uh, Chris Rock? No, not Chris no, Rock. No, Kevin uh, Hart. Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart on. I saw that as I, well. It's wild. He was having to teach kevin hart i saw the clip of like what gifted subs were and then t-pin yeah. shows up in the <laughs> chat and gift yeah. subs wait what is and then i'm over here i'm he like, called t-pain for only doing 50. yeah because someone some random just gifted 100 subs and t-pain gets 50 and kevin hart's roasting t-pain like come on man yeah wild to me i mean kai you can see on the screen too at the time it's like 120,000 subs yeah, well, Kai's like thinking wow, subs, and then Kevin times. Hart's like looking at him, and then I was like thinking to myself, I was like, is that how like normal people like look at me when I'm like <laughs> yeah. like stream? Do that, and he's like, no, it's a good thing. He's like, oh, my <laughs> bad, Pixie backsies. So I gotta say, I mean, with all the people, because I remember I, the only things I've ever seen are like random clips like that, which is also probably part of his popularity, where he's able to have these like viral clips. Yeah. Had, like I know he had Nicki Minaj on forever ago. Well, I will I will say I think his audience is primarily under the age of 15 would be my guess. 
He's got a very I'll say he's definitely very, younger. Yeah. Uh like um I saw a clip um of like it was like a teacher teaching like fourth grader subtraction or second graders and she was using phantom tax which is like a oh my god happens. as like an example god of, damn it man and all the kids are like phantom takes two bites and she's like phantom takes two bites good like <laughs> this is like jesus keep up, man. it's just like jesus christ it's crazy he's he's transcending bears i'll give it to him i mean he's he's yeah, popping off more power to you uh I'd but uh it. No, nothing nearly as cool as that. I, okay. I am, I am now a proud member of the AMC A list. No big deal. What does that mean? <laughs> I was is it like the T Mobile? Is it like the T Mobile ad campaign where you're like, oh, you're a T Mobile member or something? Essentially like Movie Pass for AMC. I always I, saw I didn't know they trailers had of it or whatever. Yeah. Well, I, like, I remember vaguely before some showings, I'd be like, join A list now to become a blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, ah, whatever. And whenever I was like checking out or stuff at the theater, they're like, are you an AMC member? And I'm like, no. Bah, and then I started thinking, every like, every other day, guy, maybe you should be. Yeah. And then I'm sitting there like, I go like once a week. Let me look into this. And then I realized, yeah, they have like a movie pass equivalent called A list. And well, this is the first month, it's a buck, but you have to sign up for three months, of course. Um, so the first month's a buck, but then every other month is, I think, $25. Now, to put that in perspective, you get three movies a week. IMAX included everything. So I went to go see Furiosa yesterday. Guess what? The ticket was 22 bucks. I, I see two movies. I'm already saving money. And I see a movie a week. And so like really concessions, at least, at least Cinemarks is concessions as well. I don't know if you well, get like some off on concessions. Yeah, I don't know if there's exact discount. Well, you do get like some upgrades. Like if you get medium popcorn, you get large, blah, blah, blah. Um, but I know too, like part of it's like you get points. When you purchase mm -hmm. whatever, and then you can you get like one free movie ticket of a, a month, three a week. You get three think. a week. Yeah, jeez. Three weeks. Like Cinemarks, you only get one a month. Yeah, and it's Darn. that's what I was saying. Like, and it includes IMAX, Dolby Cinema, and regular showings. Like it's all covered. Okay. So I'm like, I would have just been was I was like I don't know why Damn. I never no fan. Of that. Did you see yesterday? Furiosa. What is that? Uh, my Max sequel. Ah, ah, it was sick. Don't hit me with the ah. I'm okay. not I'm like okay, one of all right. This might be a hot take. I didn't like. I mean, it's not that I didn't like the first Mad Max. I just think it's probably one of the most overrated movies ever. I don't get why everyone thinks it's like the greatest thing since sliced bread. Just a bunch of cars in the desert, fun little colors, and cool, crazy, wacky shots. That's about yeah, it. Yeah, that's like, pretty much why I like it. I okay. I don't think it's like the second coming. I just think it's a good movie. I enjoyed Mad Max. Okay. And uh, Furious was great. They're actually probably even a little bit better. Um, and for those without spoilers or anything, it's not just one giant road trip, essentially, like uh, okay. Mad Max was. Um, I like that. But really cool. This, I know the world building was interesting. Does this take yeah. place after or before the Mad Max first one? Before. Okay. Yeah. Um, prequel, prequel. And what's interesting is after all this, there's also been headlines about George Miller um, saying he wasn't a big fan of the 2015 Mad Max games uh, because I Mad guess Max at the time games? they were... They had a game. It came out in 2015. Um, I didn't even know about that. Yeah, some people liked it. I mean, it was like a AAA game and everything. Um, really? I do not remember It was like, that. okay, received. But yeah, George Miller's talking about how wasn't what he wanted, and he's been very protective of the IP, I guess, especially since I mentioned, like, the, a 1990 Mad Max game that came out that was just garbage. So he's like, alright, chill. Most, um, most movie games were, though. Like, most movie games yeah, were just kind of right. like... Um, and, you can't hold that against him. But he talks about, and you can kind of see how he was working with the game development studio at the time and they were giving them like sharing all the world building stuff and ideas and stories they were making for the mo were to be movies and what's crazy is they were making this game this was like 2010s and evidently he essentially already had written and planned uh mad max fury road which was 2017 i think uh furiosa which just came out and i believe a, a another prequel but focusing on mad max 
um and like it's apparently everything we've seen today like to a t so we already had everything planned which makes mad max a book i don't know like did it start off as a book i i I don't know anything about mad max like honestly like you might as like i just know that like the tom hardy movies uh, mad max and like i don't know if that like is he mad max in that movie i don't remember like is mad max a character like he it's, my favorite part is when he gets mad and he starts maxing all over the place that's what i'm saying apparently it's it's just, it's just george f- miller's original 1979 film i believe he created the entire thing okay so um yeah it's just been his okay his bread and butter his little baby um i, th- I think i remember hearing either it through influence from another series around that time or vice versa something like that but yeah either way it's been george miller's um and he's been able to deliver on his vision i'd say much better than he was in the 70s and 80s yeah uh, uh, i mean i like monster trucks were there any monster trucks in this one <laughs> there were a couple <laughs> that's cool uh acting was great chris hemsworth really did a good job and yeah it was just a, a good addition and but the point is yeah I, I got uh, all right, nine out eight and a half, nine out of ten. Okay, Ooh. I'm gonna do a new thing every time you rate right a movie. Now. I'm gonna like slap a thing on the thing that goes like boom, and then it's gonna show all your other movies that you rated. We'll just start with this one because now that I, we'll have to, we might need to do a wait. Did you see Planet of the Apes? Did we talk? We talked about that last week, right? I don't think we did. I mean, I did see it, I don't know. If we because I, I know that's that's your thing you're huge See, and i still haven't seen it oh but i've not? heard like man eh. so like yeah. that's what kind of like been holding me back i rewatched the trilogy right before get back into it um and it is a great trilogy oh, you see i you love like the so third one yeah it's like one of my favorite third one was great. um well, i'll be honest first one i didn't rewatch the whole way the little spark notes i was like eh I know that much. Let's just get the second. Let's get third. to the I end. Let's get to the end. I know. Like, yeah, I know the yeah. first. I've seen it a couple. Yeah, you know, he's learning sign uh, language. He's smart. Like, yeah. let's move on. So this one, uh, I don't know where I put it, but yeah, it was okay. I think it, I'm more hopeful for because I think it's supposed to be a new trilogy. What it's setting up, um. But it also might have been tainted because I also just walked away just depressed because I'm like, man, humans suck. And that's just what it reminds me of. Or just yeah. like, well, you know, God, we're the worst. But then you watch Oppenheimer and then you think like, wow, um, humans are amazing. So, <laughs> and they nearly destroyed all of us. Um, my favorite thing of that is still like the whole like, there's a non-zero percent chance that it'll just ignite like all the helium in the atmosphere or whatever, and like we'll all burn up in a second. So, all right, know. let's try it. You're sure. Um, well, to push science. Yeah, why not, right? So, yeah, I enjoyed it. I might need to to change my scale then instead of like the normal 1 through 10. Because realistically, unless, like, unless it's just like a bad movie, I enjoy most movies at the mm-hmm. very least. Like, you're, a pretty soft, you're a pretty soft critic. Yeah, you're going you're gonna to have to... Do something pretty heinous to get like Wait, is, below a seven. Is Jurassic Park like the last bad movie you saw in theaters? That like you can think on the top of your head. On the top of my head, yeah. Yeah. Now, now, granted, I haven't seen every release in theaters. I'm sure there's been worse ones. But for me, I watched that. Yeah, and that one on a one to ten scale would be like a five for me. That's a five. Like that's still fifty percent. Like. Well, it like the it's it reminds me of like a video game scale for me where it's just like five is right in the middle of, of like it's a movie. Anything less where it's like you've just misunderstood like the my time basic is wasted principles of a movie. You, my time is wa- well, I'd argue my time might have been wasted, but <laughs> time is definitely wasted. And also, just like there are fundamental movie things that you just botched, <laughs> like get worse and worse, which reminds me. Of a Pierce Brosnan, I think I might have mentioned this. Claire and I tried to watch this movie uh, it was like a year or two ago, whatever. Um, we we're gonna like rent one or whatever, and it had just come out on digital. It was 
Uh, I think you did talk Pierce about Brosman. this. Yeah, and Nick Cannon or something. It's supposed to be like a heist movie. And I'm like, all right, sure, I like heist movies. They're, how bad could it be? We made it 20 minutes before. We didn't even get our money back. We just stopped watching. <laughs> that is like a one or a two, where it's just like <laughs> pacing We just off, stopped watching. Editing off. Sound mixing off. Acting terrible. Like everything, where it's just like every movie fun. Like that's where it just a. Do you enjoy um, watching bad you guys, movies? You guys didn't even try. No. No. no I do. I'm not one of those, yeah, ironic, like, a bad movie is a good movie for like being so bad. Like The Room or something like that. Like, I've yeah, never no. seen like, that movie. You, you don't get enjoyment off of the cringe. No. Oh, I, I remember, n- ew. Like, I remember back in high school, uh, my friend Dallas came over and tried to show me Rubber. You might remember that. It came out around rubber. then. Rubber. And it's the movie about a tire that it just goes on, like, a murder spree. <laughs> and it's a t- it's a t- like it's just so a tire. So gas, so gas. Yeah, and he, we watched that, and he's like, "Dude, it's that was so good and bad, right?" And I was like, "It was just bad. No, like I didn't, just... I did not enjoy <laughs> I that. I like, didn't get anything from this. I wish I could get enjoyment." But okay, no, so rubber. Um, I used to also Pierce Brosnan movie and Jurassic Park <laughs> yeah. bad. All right, let me put those well, in the, the thing bad too tier. Is, 11, 12 years ago, talk to me. I was a movie snob, like a critic snob. Mm. Yeah, and like Shinders if I thought I was always a great piece critical, of work. yeah, and I go in there and I'm like this or that. Citizen Kane like, is such a great movie. Like, shut up. I remember it's made in the forties. Relax. I'm like, what is this? That's why I hate the most. Cinema. When people yeah. say like movies from the forties are like the best, it's like Maybe. stop. It's a preference for it's no. a taste. That's come on, for- Toots, get in the plane. <laughs> like I'm not watching that. Like, if you don't get in the uh, plane, I'm gonna. Beat you in the face yeah. after this. Well, Come on, a cigarette the... in the plane. <laughs> what a time! Uh, what a time to be alive. Wouldn't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, it it changed somewhere around there. Where it's just like, screw it. Why? Why not? You, like, what's the point? Just have fun with a movie. If the movie's a movie, doesn't have to be fantastic or like Oscar worthy. It's essentially, did I watch it? Get out of it and enjoy it, or like enjoy my time. Yes. Well, there it is. At the very least, it's like a seven for me. So most okay. movies, I go in and I'm like, yeah. So for me, box? that's why we need to like narrow the scale of like one to five, three to five. Three is just like most movies are going to sit there. Four is like, I thought it was really good. Five is like, this is incredible. And then two or one, if you're in there, you might as well just like give up. What are you doing? Um, maybe that's so then I would put Furiosa and I won't do halves because then it gets too. So I would put Furiosa four. Okay. That's what I'll do. We'll change the scale a little bit. Wait, you got it four? Like four out of five? Yeah. Oh, okay. I was like, whoa. Yeah. So, no, let's change the scale even more. Okay. okay. One through five. Okay. One two through five. is essentially what seven was going to be, where two, almost any movie for me is going to start at two. Okay. If it's a one, that speaks to just like. And we're the, 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 the scale the one, thing. we're putting the Pierce Brosnan movie. Yeah. Like that That's is like your. Okay. Two would be like Jurassic Park, whatever that most recent one was called. Where it's like, <sighs> I didn't really like it. It felt like it oh. missed a lot of stuff, but also. <laughs> you never know when it's ending. It was, like, it's like just never ending. Yeah, it was a movie, and I'll give him that. But like. Dinosaurs. It had dinosaurs. Been, you know, I like dinosaurs. It did. Um, and then three would be like, oh, I like that. Four is, I thought it was really good. And five is like everywhere, everywhere. It's got to be one of the type. top. Yeah, or Dune two for me. Okay, Dune two before. Dune two came Knights out came on, on HBO Max, Max, and Sydney literally just took the remote, put it on, and then just like skipped to like your favorite like shots in the movie, <laughs> and then like. <laughs> well, it's funny. I like, came upstairs, and she, she always gives me shit for falling asleep during Dune uh, in, at IMAX. That are like third time seeing it. And I was like, oh, you're watching Dune. She's like, yeah, but I skipped to like the good parts. And I was like, oh, yeah. And then I was like, guess what? You literally just get everything that I said is boring about Dune 2. And like, <laughs> she and started it right where I said the movie gets good. So I was like, stop giving me shit. Well, it reminds me of uh, how you talk about it reminds me of Endgame, where if I rewatch Endgame, I sort of just skip the first like third. Because mm-hmm. it's really slow. Like the first time you watch it, it was really yeah. necessary. Yeah, and it was great. And then on rewatch, you're like, I know this. It's slow. Let's just 
Not Give because me to the it's teleporter. bad. Yeah, but like it was necessary exposition and world building and story, all that stuff. But on like repeat views, we it's get or, or yeah, we're sort of yeah. like the first Planet of the Eight movie for me. I've seen it once or twice all the way through, and now it's just like all right, kind of get to the you know like four fifths of the way through it. Oh, okay, now we're starting. Um, just because like yeah, yeah, you, you already get the idea. So if you enjoyed Mad Max, I would definitely say go see Furiosa. If you were mixed on Mad Max, you'll probably be mixed on Furiosa. Um, so take it with the, it's more of that. Although I think it's like, it's just more refined. Like he's, he's even more clear on like what he wants to do and stylize and vision. Um, hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I'm an A-list member. That was. Congratulations. I'm, I'm Congrats, really happy man. for it. Thank you. Thank you. Let us know the uh, next movie. Uh, here's the current list of. Our Mr. Fruit list of movies. I go back. Yeah, I mean, I didn't expect Rubber to be in this. Is Rubber a one or a two? <laughs> Rubber's a one. Rubber's a one. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Rubber's a one. Let's be honest. Let's be let's be clear here. Um, and yeah, more or less. I mean, I think also what's sort of been happening because it was COVID made releases so slow, yeah. especially this like last year and now we're finally getting back to like oh like almost every week, especially summer. Like oh. New releases, Ooh, yeah. big releases. Oh, we're getting back to it. As long as that keeps up, yeah, I pretty much see movie week. Well, I um, mean, the movie you saw like two weeks ago, Fall Guy, that you enjoyed a lot, is already coming out on streaming yeah. services after two weeks. Oof. As as a movie theater goer, I'm worried because, like, unless it's Barbenheimer event, theaters be struggling. Well, it's like everybody it's talks about, like, oh, we want new IPs. We're sick and tired of Ghostbusters 8. And then, like, all right. And then, and like, it's just a good, right. fun new movie. And yeah, here's a fun new movie that has no IP attached to it and it's kind of a new franchise. Starring Ryan Reynolds and Emily Blunt, who are great actors and actresses. Uh, no. No, I'm not going. Probably some, probably some marketing issues on their front, too. But, yes, yeah, unfortunately. Like, I, I was thinking word of mouth might have helped, but I guess not. Um, so what are you gonna do? Uh, Ungentlemanly Warfare, yeah, I saw that one. That was before Fall Guys. That one was fun, just, just good movies out right now. Although, I heard that I didn't see it. The If with uh, oh, I think it was directed by John Krasinski fun, and stuff. That does apparently look like it's, a fun movie. Oh, really? Uh, apparently, it's kind of mixed, yeah, you know, uh, unfortunately. Uh, I think the premise but, is a good idea, and probably the story is just shite, yeah, it is an interesting idea. I guess the criticisms aren't, uh, or just won't hold up to the criticisms, which reminds me, I saw uh, a Reddit post last night, dissecting, where essentially it's like, the, because speaking of directed by John Krasinski, the monsters, whatever, the aliens in Quiet Place. Quiet Place, yeah. Yeah, like they don't make it, they'd be destroyed in like a month. Like, this doesn't make any sense. Like, they are not that big of a threat. And then, then they list, like, all the ways they could easily be taken care of uh, going off of everything we know in the universe. And somebody essentially was like, yeah, I think it was one of those things that it was, like, a cool idea in a vacuum and it wasn't meant to be scrutinized this much. Or, yeah. like, it was going to be a one-off and then just, like, you move on. Yeah, but now you got a sequel. It. Now we're getting a prequel to the point where, like, people are talking about, like, well... Here are all the ways this would be really easy yeah. to, like, eradicate. But then somebody had an interesting idea. It was like, well, what if these are just, like, the, the lackeys that the real aliens just threw at us first to, like, weaken us? Oh. It's like, the first, like, these are, like, their dogs. It's not even, like, the real aliens. Like, the real aliens True. are a real threat. They're just like, see how they handle this. Like, wow, well, yeah. that worked pretty well. They must be. That would be an interesting idea. I don't think that's that is a cool idea. interesting idea. Yeah, I don't think that's actually the, the thing. But uh, speaking of uh, living up to uh, the hype, uh, Valve's new game uh, that they're making uh, sure isn't living up not to the hype that three. people. Don't yeah, the... Half Life Three. Sorry for the thirty-five uh, year old still waiting for Half Life Three. Uh, I feel like that joke has kind of aged out because, to be honest, I don't think any of us here have played any Half Life game. So, I, well, I recently played the first. Really? Like why? Two hours. 
I was doing a video on 90s games. Oh. That's why. I mean, we have played Gary's Mod, which it's is fair. a sandbox of Half-Life, you know, so. Um, well, a new game Valve has made, and if those that don't know, Valve never makes games. Um, Valve never makes games, and when they do, they're bangers. Normally. I don't know. Well, artifact. I mean. Artifact. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah. Everyone artifact. on on command. That was a card artifact. game, though, so, you know, uh, they just kind of missed the point there. But, hey, yeah, they did give awesome. us the artifact Twitch, uh, like, channel, like, room or whatever they call that. <laughs> yeah, all that. Directory. The artifact directory was lit. So, uh, Valve is making a new game. Uh, it's a 6v6 third-person hero-based shooter. And Heroes include... <laughs> You're a mo MOBA. You're MOBA. out, Blue. You're already out. I'm, I'm already out. Yeah. What if it's like TF2? The, the TF2, though. Like, we'll TF2 see. is a class-based shooter. It's not a hero-based shooter. This it's is... A... They, they throw on. in MOBA. So yeah. Initially, I'm like, what if this is a successful Battleborn? That's where I'm coming from. So it says, heroes include magicians, robots, creatures, humans, and more. There are currently 19 different heroes with different abilities and playstyles that you come to expect from MOBA, including ranged healers, tanks, assassins, etc. Players have described the game uh, to be very similar to Dota in terms of its gameplay loop and mechanics. This includes killing enemies and creeps to get in-game currency of souls, which will allow you to buy items to make your hero stronger, according to sources. Both creeps and enemies will spawn a soul upon death, which floats up, uh, floats up and away when they die. Uh, you collect them. Uh, you collect the most souls by shooting at them. Souls that float away still provide a small amount of souls currency. Uh, and as for the creeps, they uh, spawned randomly throughout the map, including a larger AI boss that spawns in the middle of the map. Some players also outlined that there are also spirit urns, which players can deposit in the middle of the map to give a whole team. Uh, to give their give the whole team more souls, so it looks like it leans very into the MOBA uh, aspect of things. Really, I'm here for it. Yeah, I'll I think it's, it's, it's kind of if it's good. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Now man, uh... the alpha gameplay we have seen, I'll have it like here playing as it goes and whatnot. Uh, is alpha gameplay? You know, it doesn't yeah. look great. Well, here's the thing, too. Valve hasn't announced this. Yeah, this hasn't these been are all leaks. These are leaks. So the game hasn't even been officially announced. This is obviously gameplay that wasn't meant to be seen. So, like, who knows? Probably the art direction isn't where it's going to be. That I don't even think that in the alpha gameplay they have other people to shoot. It's just someone running around shooting yeah, nothing. Yeah, it's just someone doing their ability. Like, every champ's ability, like, or whatever so, they ended up calling them. It reminds me of like the GTA 6 leagues. Take it all with a grain of salt because everyone's like, wow, this looks like garbage. Yeah. Because like this is the stuff you don't see when the game's in development. So take it with a grain of salt because. So uh, an article here says uh, yes, Dota 2, CSGO, and TF2 are wonderful, but those games. But all are all games Valve inherited from outside developers and modders, then built upon it and expanded it. When it comes to wholly original games, Valve has released stuff like Artifact, Ricochet, and Dota Underlords. And some could say even Dota Underlords is kind of a like well, that, rip off yeah, auto wasn't, chess. Yeah, wasn't that also from someone in the community? I, I think so. I would yeah. Mm -hmm. Um and Half Life Deathmatch. So people aren't very confident uh, in Valve's ability to make a you know online game, but we'll see. Uh, I think it sounds interesting, and it's Valve, so I'll be there. You know, I just hope it's good. I mean, if it's taking them away from CS:GO and making CS:GO operations <laughs> and, or CS2 operations, hey, I respect it. But for me, Blue, you like MOBAs. It sounds like a wet dream. Oh, sorry, right. guys. I guess TF2 is all you'll ever need. Uh, but yeah, I think it seems kind of interesting, and I'll be there for it, and I'm excited to hear more about it. Listen, I hope it's good, but I don't know, man. I'm... Valve has not exactly hit lately, nor has their fully original games hit. Um, they do have a habit of turning community ideas into gold, which is awesome. But um, 
you know, been a while since they done that. And I hope it's good, but like I, I'm just kind of like another hero shooter MOBA light. Like, ugh. I'll be. Uh, this sounds kind of cool for you, Christian. It says fast travel using floating rails, similar to Bioshock Infinite. So it seems that's kind of how you get around the map. God only knows what I'd be without you. Now, if um, this is the if this is the closest thing I'll get to Battleborn. Hopefully scratches all that roads, itch. all roads lead back to Battleborn for Mr. Fruit. <laughs> so if that's the case, it's going to die. Yeah. Uh, it's, oh, if I enjoy on, it, man. just write you it don't off. know that just... it could maybe it could pop off. I mean, that'd you be could sick. get Battleborn the, the resurgence edition or some shit. It's going to be great, man. Up a bless. Well, I was talking with it with somebody recently, and I think we've talked about it, too, but it's just like. The the game's landscape has just been so weird the past years compared to what it used to be. And, like, nobody knows what the next big thing's going to be. Oh, it hasn't been announced. It's going to come out of nowhere. Because, like, no new game is really propping up giant communities anymore or creators. Um, so I'm just hoping whatever that next game is, because really the last one I can really think about is, like, Fortnite. Yeah. Um, whatever, the, whatever the next Fortnite is, I just hope I, I enjoy zone. it. Uh, well, I mean, like, Warzone sort of, but that was pretty close to Fortnite, and I think it just falls to Battle Royale. Like, I don't think the next giant game is going to be another Battle Royale. I mm. don't think. Like, I think Fortnite's going to be the, the pinnacle of the Battle Royale genre, unless somebody, like, drastically reiterates. Um, but, yeah, I'm just hoping whatever it is, I enjoy it. Because that would make my life so much easier. Um, True. Because, like, Fortnite... Enjoyed it for a little while, but then I was like, I just... wasn't long term for me. Um, so if something like a Battleborn like game that I know I'd like popped off, that'd be great. But uh, uh, you know, I'm not too confident about that one, Chief. Yeah, Eldivers two popped off like Fortnite. That is the most cap thing I've ever heard. Sorry, unknown source. Uh, Helldivers, uh, Helldivers was big. Has popped off like Fortnite. Hell, are big, but like Fortnite. Yeah, I mean, like that's like its own like atomic bomb. You know what I mean? Like when it came out, say, like, Fort, Fortnite, it, Fortnite will have these peaks and valleys where it's just like everyone's back playing Fortnite, and no other game in the Western Hemisphere right now really has that. Like, ev like Fortnite is a cultural thing like normies know what fortnite is and normies will be like yeah i've played fortnite you have people like fucking doji cat playing fortnite you know what i mean like you have and fortnite in in game or whatever yeah and it's like don't get me wrong hell divers popped off but that's still like still in the gamer sphere rarely does a game transcend the gamer sphere to become like a cultural thing which i mean that's fortnite fortnite is on a different level i don't Obviously, think it's, we'll see something know, like that for a long time yeah. yeah, Fortnite was just crazy, dude. <sighs> crazy. Terrifying, even. And it's still just... Just, I... Still doing way better than people think, even though, like, it's not talked about as much anymore. It's still just, like, low-key huge. Or, like, yeah. so many of the, the normies. Because, like, that's what a lot of us, especially like in our space, of, like, the more concentrated online gaming community hardcore gaming community be like well i haven't seen much talk about fortnite well yeah but all the normies over there there's pop or same with like call of duty wars on it's still popping off or like yeah all sort of, so we just don't see that discourse yeah. or like constant updates anymore because a lot of it's not going viral but it's still chugging right along um, every couple of months you know, i'll just i'll still see like someone like oh my god this is coming to fortnite and it's like uh, you know, like some adding company to the... is what I saw. Lethal Company's coming. Mad Max is coming. Fallout. Yeah, yeah just, it's a power just, armor. Just adding to the metaverse. Yeah. Um. We um tried to play a game uh that wanted to pop off as bad as Fortnite this weekend, or I guess this week. Uh, X Defiant. Uh, 
came it's not out. not set up for failure. I mean, I don't think they were expecting to be I mean, Fortnite. I was just going to say they were expecting to have Fortnite numbers on day one. They did. I don't know. But their Maybe. servers just didn't work, and that pissed <laughs> yeah. me off. And then there's I mean, something bigger. I think I have a bigger gripe with X Defiant. And it's not something about the game. It's about you had me. The it's about oh. me. Oh, are you ass? I think I'm just like not good. And I think like I just have to like accept that with those type of games. When those games like cause I bitch about the jumping in that game and the sliding in that game. When in reality it's like you could just do that and get good. Like but like in reality, like I mean for what it's worth, I have a video coming out and it's soon. And I literally bring up a point where like I'm I hate all this jumping and stuff. And then I admit, am I just a boomer who refuses to adapt? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, like, am I, I saying, that. like, that should but be I'm out of the game? Complain. But I don't know. Like, I just, I understand, like, why people, like, like having that kind of movement. But, like, oh, my God, get a fucking job. Like, it is so annoying trying to, like, <laughs> kill people well, that, like, move like that, man. Like, it's and so I know it's annoying. Like, it's not realistic or whatever. But, like, why... Are you at more of an advantage in gunfights, jumping around like a rabbit? That like you should be penalized if anything, but like with the slide movement, you can actually get like more momentum and turn quicker. And then subsequent jumps, they just put on like their mouse wheel, and then there's no the like it, it just doesn't make sense why that's it should even be better. I hate it. Um, Dude, but then like, are we just old? Are we just old? And like that's I mean, kind yes. of the, the if we the part up, that I'm at. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. Like, imagine we grew up, but Halo 3 had that. Like, well, I'd be slipping and sliding right now it. if this was 10 yeah. years ago. I think we would be. So I think that's part of it. It's just like, that's not what we grew up on or like what our shooters were. And they're adding that into it. And for me, it like, I think the jarring aspect is it doesn't feel like it's, it's not a momentum-based shooter like Apex or Titanfall. Like, I had no problem with that in Titanfall because that's what Titanfall was was like crazy wall running, grappling, movement tech. True. I get it. It had maps like built for that and like you were kind of Yeah, ready like for you that. know you're but this just feels like like boots on the ground call of duty back in the day, more or less. And so then when the best optimal things are all these and that's also why like we've been playing the first day and the second day we were playing the unranked, which shout out to the devs, I'll give it to them. Unranked, connection based. Ranked, skill based. Wow. What we've been saying. What a thought. Now, like, well, we'll see how it pulls up. But also what I've noticed is, so when you first boot up the game, there's technically a welcome playlist until you level 25, which is a good bit, because I don't think I'm 25 yet. I don't even think I'm 25. Yeah. And during the welcome playlist, there is skill-based matchmaking. And a lot of people are failing to realize it. But it says it clearly, like, in the description of the playlist. So for the first 25 levels, and I think this is actually a pretty smart way to go about it. For the first 25 levels... First game or two, you might get stomped if you're, no, you know, you're below average. But then you'll find your skill bracket. And as you learn the game or start the game, you're in skill-based lobbies. And I think it's smart from a certain standpoint because that's what skill, a lot of skill-based matchmaking is meant to do is to, like, attract person. So in those first 25 levels, if there was no protection, this is what people talk about. Well, I just hop on, I get stomped and be like, well, why do I want to play the game? So I think their idea is give them the first 25 levels to maybe hook them and be like, oh, I like this game. Like, oh, actually, this is pretty fun. They hop out of it. Suddenly it's connection based and maybe they're out of their skill bracket again. But now they're invested into the game. Like, well, I like the game. So now they can play ranked if they want to just go skill based or play unranked. But like you get that nice medium ground of starting people off not so harshly, not just immediately throwing them into the deep end. But the first day or two, we played the unranked playlist. Um, we didn't play welcome playlist, so it was connection-based. And I think it was sweatier than had we skill-based. Probably. Because the only people who were actively searching not the welcome playlist were all the good people, essentially. And the people who've been waiting for this. Because, like, those were not normal lobbies. When five out of the six enemy players have their sense cracked up and jump it around like that. I'm sorry, that's not the average gamer. No, not at all. So 
we I, I already know it's like well we might as well be skill based matchmaking. First game I nearly dropped um, fifty, and then like I was struggling to get just uh, over twenty, like by well, like the last game. We played some the other day, and then you hopped off, Joey, and I kept playing. It's like man, I guess we have to wait because that's like what I was thinking. It's like okay, all the normal people must still be in the welcome playlist because again, like. And it was weird too because I swear our teammates are the ones without opposable thumbs. Like yeah. every single game. It was always the, and then the enemy. Every single was... game, the enemy team, all of them are like two, three KD spawn camping. And I'm just like, man. What? That's why I said, like, I was like, I'm having an extra. Am I, am I just bad? Like, should I just yeah. not have any sort I'm of thinking. attachment? I was, like, I was like, maybe, maybe uh, somebody made the joke too about like Tim the Tapman or whatever. He was playing um, and something happened. Like, he either played connection based or something was getting stomped and they're like what tim doesn't realize is skill based matchmaking is there for people like him to protect him that's what like, like, finally I finally realized he thinking. needs skill based matchmaking like am i the one yeah, that needs what, it that's what i've been thinking so I, that's why i'm waiting a couple days to see if some of the normies getting to unranked cuz i like it i, just I like know. the game it's fun, yeah, it's fun. like it, i i like the i like the the shooting i like the engine i like the look of it i like the graphics I, it's fun I just hate trying to shoot people that are slip slapping and floopy dooping all over the place. Like, that's why towards the end I was playing with Joey. I started jumping around corners. I was like, "Do I have to just start? Do yeah. I have to?" And the worst part too is most of the time, yeah, I would kill the person, or like I would do it against the people who were jumping me. And this is what upsets me the most: is once I get those people into a one v one gunfight, I just outgun them every time. Yeah. Most of those people, like, it feels like it's a crutch for them where they do But as soon as, that's why I think, too, why I just don't like the jumping. I'm pretty confident in my aim. And I know it's above average. So if you just give me a duel, I feel it's like above average. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like five and a half, maybe. You know who really knows? A gentleman's six. But that's when they seven. add the jumping and stuff, that's when I like it. And then I'm just like, it's almost like the Hubert, like, 1v1 me, bro. Like, you can't. Find out with your friends that you're all reaching for their bad habits and you feel that urge to not be left out and ask to borrow one of theirs. What if I was to tell you there's a better alternative that helps you kick your bad habit in an enjoyable way, something you can take out with you? That's right. I'm talking about Fume. Fume is an award-winning flavored air device. Flavored air isn't like vaping. If vapor was compared to sticky soda, Fume cores are closer to herbal teas. Fume has delicious flavors to choose from like crisp mint and orange vanilla. Orange vanilla is my absolute favorite. It tastes so good. My favorite thing too is it's made to fidget with. It calms my anxiety with magnets, snaps, and clicks. Fume has served over 300,000 customers and you can be their next success story. For a limited time, use our code GG to get a free gift with your journey pack. Head to tryfume.com. That's tryfum.com and use code GG. Thank you, Fume, for helping me with my bad habits. Yeah, coward. And then I just complain. It's like a defense mechanism. I'm with you, Rob. I, I'm in denial. Yeah. Um, but still having fun. Yeah, I, I think the game is fun. Like, don't get me wrong. I think it's a good time. I think it's fun. Um, just the movement pissed me the fuck off. Well, and again, I need to look back. What also confuses me is I swear a year ago or a year and a half ago when they were talking about development it was not like that. And stuff. Yeah, I thought they were purposely talking about how they... Now, again, I could just be misremembering, but I thought they, like, specifically talked about not wanting to have that be in the game. Or, like, you know, for a, a uh, whatchamacallit, like, a slide jump for you to then be penalized with, like, slower movement after and you can't, like, chain it. Like, I swear, could you, but I swear to God, that was, like, yeah. a design decision they were You're going You're on to something. You're on to something. And now it is a complete 180. Because now there's like no movement penalty. If not, like At you all. should try. If you slide jump the way you can, like in air and stuff, I'm like, it, I don't know if that's what they changed in the last year or they realized like maybe that's what they need to appeal to more people. I don't know. Well, I just yeah. noticed too, like when you jump and shoot, like I'll be in a long range battle with somebody with like a sniper and they'll be shooting at me just jumping and like hitting every shot. And it's like, it's you're right. literally like 80 yards away. Like, how <laughs> is this happening? It's crazy. 
So two but, boomers versus a new shooter. That's yeah. what I'm saying though. Like, am I like, it, am I just like an old man, like just yelling at the wind, like get with the times, old man type shit? The thing with me is in this connection based, and like I've talked about it, and I'll be the first. To, I'm fine getting pub stomped if I get a pub stomp. Like <laughs> the the it balances out. Like I know there are people better than me, and when I fight them, I'm going to lose. And I know there are a lot of people worse than me, and when I fight, I'm probably going to beat them. And and there's this balance. But right now, and again, it's for a like day or two. It's like not exactly pub stomp. We're not getting exactly pub stomp, but we're just like losing. Yeah. And even if I'm going positive slightly, I'm not like popping off because everybody on the enemy team can just turn on a dime, hit every shot, and that's when I'm just like, am I am I washed? So I won't know. But if we get back to the oscillation of pub stomp, get pub stomp, pub stomp, get pub stomp, I'm like, okay. No, there's, a clear, there's a clear division of people I'm better than. And there's a clear division of people that are better than me. Um, yeah, right now I'm, I'm with you in denial because it's like, wait, if this isn't skill-based and we can't win games and I'm only staying slightly positive, am I bad? <laughs> Is it me? Mm-hmm. That's where I'm at right now. But game's fun. Check it out. Um, Free to play. Yeah. And this weekend, well, Friday, well, I guess, yeah, today until Tuesday, double weapon XP. Thank God. Oh. Cause it's so slow to level, which makes sense because, again, it's free to play. So they don't want people unlocking everything. And it's not going to be like a Call of Duty where there's a new one every single year. So my real question is just a matter of, like, how long does this have a leg? Mm-hmm. Like many of these, like, arena, arcade arena shooters. Um, and I don't know the answer to that. I guess we'll see. At the very least, I think it was good to release it now because that probably gives them, you know, five, six months before the Call of Duty. And then realistically, what? I think it's Black Ops 6, which already got teased or whatever. That's going to come out, and then, yeah, we'll probably go back to that, and, you know. But. Um, speaking of going back, um, on May 28th, um... I'm sure some of us will be heading back to multiverses is oh. back. <sighs> oh no, blue. Don't tell me you're down on this as well. I was going to cut to you and be like, are hey, you excited are, for this fighting game? Vibes are up over here. All right. I, I, I do appreciate that. It does look a lot better than the, like the first one. I think they did. People were like another one. Didn't they just have one? And I was like, yeah, but this one, they clearly, you know, they clearly got some funding on this one. Like, so I think it's well, cool, but I'm have you, also ha- like, have you heard the roster though? The what roster does look really cool. I, I uh, have seen the roster. I'll go through the roster right now. We have Marvin the Martian from Looney Tunes. One of my also, favorite Looney Tunes. Oh, go ahead. We should give context. because I'm sure some yeah. people are listening. Don't know what multiverses is. Oh, okay. It's, uh, platform fighter like Smash, uh, Super Smash Brothers, but it's Warner Brothers uh, IP. So yep. as Rob's about to announce all the characters, you realize it's all under the Warner Brothers brand. Um, and it came out because you might have heard of it. Like, wait, I've heard of this. I've seen you guys make videos on out. it before. Yeah, like what? Well, it came out into early access. I'm using quotations here. Like a year, year and a half ago or something. And went on for a couple months. But then they're like, hey, we're taking it down. Claiming it was then a beta, which I don't really think it was. But yeah. that's, how it, that's how they were spinning it because I think they were seeing negative returns on players and some problems with like their monetization system and all that, some confusion, blah, 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 blah. So they're like, all right, let's take it down and give it the best chance we got. One more shot. So they took it down in a, you know about a year later. Is now they're actually releasing the full game. This is yep. like the full thing, um, with changes to like some of the microtransactions and the ways you unlock things. Blah blah blah. So it's a little more friendly and all that sort of stuff. Um, but that's why you might be like, well, I thought this already came out. It sort of did. They yeah. backed it. They walked it back a couple months later. So um, there are some. Uh, there are new champs yeah. though, or I guess new characters. So mm-hmm. we have Marvin the Martian, great Looney Tune character. Uh, we have Gizmo uh, from. Isn't he the uh, uh, fur, furball? The yeah, what are the, I don't. Or Furby? I, no, it looks like a Furby, but it's not. What is what's that movie called? I it's it like from, don't. Isn't it Gremlins? Gremlins? Yeah, yeah Gremlins. Gremlins. Uh, and then we have Black Adam, DC hero, obviously. 
and then we have uh, Stripe, who looks like he is also from uh, Gremlins. Uh, we got Rick from Rick and Morty. We also have Morty from Rick and Morty. Uh, we got LeBron James. Um, LeBron James. Uh, the Iron Giant, who I like to play as. Uh, Taz, who was in the original Velma in the original. Was Arya Stark in the, in the original. Batman, who was in the original. Bugs Bunny. Uh, Finn the Human. Uh, Garnett. Uh, Harley Quinn, Jake the Dog, Ryan Dog, uh, Shaggy, Steven Universe, Superman, Tom and Jerry, and Wonder Woman. So there you go. There's your roster. And it says more to be revealed later. So it looks like they'll be continuously updating it, hopefully. I'm hoping it's just fun and it carves out, like, I think the problem is so many people are like, and to be fair, almost all the gaming communities see everything so black and white, like the X defined, like it's the Call of Duty killer or any new looter shirt or whatever. So is it the Destiny killer? Uh, multiverse oh, is going to kill like, Smash. Is it fun or like, yeah, fun? That's it, all I want to know. And Jason Voorhees is in, oh, in the game right, as well. Yeah, yeah. I guess he just got announced like yesterday. Um, But it's less about will it kill it and more can it carve out a slice in that space to coexist because realistically Will we like, see you're, you're not going to beat super smash um I, I well think this year i don't it was at last year's um it was like a tiny one i don't think it's going to be probably like a main stage date not even smash yeah. is um well they don't, smash just isn't as evo at evo well that yeah and platform fighters as a whole like Evo main stage, like day three, whatever, is usually always like the, the big, like Tekken, Street Fighter, whatever one paid for it, like some random <laughs> anime one. It's usually the more uh, classic fighters like that. But yeah, I'm just looking for like a fun game that, on my PC that I can just boot up and like chill in sometimes. Um, and of course, multiverses spend two on it. It's typically it's 2v2. That's like the main mode a lot of the characters specifically have abilities or synergies do they have voice act, with allies. acting now they did did they, they, already, they already i thought that was act. like their big thing like or like that people that was, didn't like is like that was spongebob way back when i believe oh that was, was like that nickelodeon all-stars nickelodeon All yeah oh, okay that's what i'm getting confused with yeah i think that came out with like no voice acting and people were like how do you so they brought it back in a future update or whatever but yeah that was okay All-Stars. Uh, what else do we have on this list here? That um... oh, I want to headline just came out like last night or whatever. Uh huh. Um, where Neil Druckmann, uh, director, lead or whatever of Naughty Dog. Yeah. Does Naughty Dog next? Of us too. <laughs> says Naughty Dog's next game and quote could redefine mainstream perceptions of gaming. In uh, every so, time yeah, I've heard this before. What does that even mean, though? Like They say this every time. They're like, it's going to change storytelling. And it's like, guys, what if we just chose to not be violent is the whole thing. And it's like, dude, what a fucking concept. Neil Druckmann is like the peak Silicon Valley uh, Doomer Coomer that is like... That's I'm like, smarter than guys, everybody. It's like, it's like, guys, what about co-op living? Where you live with a roommate, but it's not a roommate. You live in the same shared space as someone mm. and you have the same interests as them. Co-op living. And it's like you did you see Here's a hundred and twenty million dollars. It's like, did you just invent did you just invent roommates? And he's just like, no, bro, it's not roommates, it's co-op living. Or like they'll be like, Okay, guys, what about this? Co-op transportations. What about these special vehicles that go around at specific times and take you to high population dense areas of your city? Yeah, now, that's just a here's bus. The sick, now, here's the sick part. <laughs> you could buy a membership to it. And if you don't have a membership, you could do a flat fee and then ride along with other people of the same like-minded ideas going to the places that you want to go to. Neil, you just invented bus routes. no. Bus routes aren't the same because here you can get a membership for ten ninety nine a month. Neil, that's, that's just Neil a punch Druckmann. ticket. <laughs> that's like, Neil Druckmann. This headline reads like he's trying to pitch to investors. 
That's right. Like that's what I heard too. It's like, like typical. Like this is. Here's the thing. I would love to see that because I don't think anyone right now really knows what the next evolution of gaming is truly going to look like. For the longest time, people were saying, you know, VR, or like augmented reality. Who really knows? I think that might be the evolution eventually, but I don't think we're close. So, like, what is the next thing? And while he says this, I'm skeptical. Would it be cool if it is? Sure. But this just speaks, like, this reminds me of when Todd Howard says anything. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. They just went through, in through hey, one. But that's just back up right now, though. though. The, it's just always big well, words, I mean, big promises. Now they can get away with that. There's nothing. There's nothing wrong with the it, it being up. It's just the simple fact of the matter is, when they say things, it's often cap. It's often like at one point I was like, oh yeah, like I can see what you're saying. But like Todd Howard especially is just the ultra capper. Like you can't trust a thing that dude says. Now, like, when Bethesda makes cool things, I'm, yeah, Pog. But when Todd Howard's like, dude, the new Bethesda's game going to revolutionize the way you guys perceive video games. And I'm going to be like, so it's going to be okay, another Todd. Fallout clone, Todd. Got <laughs> it. Yeah, so it's going to be another talk to the... Hey. <laughs> uh, I don't know about that. That's going to sweep. Uh, the, the quote from Neil Druckmann and when Todd Howard says it, uh, the equivalent for me are like CGI trailers. Cool. 100%, 100%. So what about the actual game? Like this means nothing to me. But sweet. I mean, that's I'm not cool. moved. Yeah, like the CGI trailer, like that looks cool. That would make for a great game. But what's the what's the actual game like? So just to hear it like come out and who knows, maybe people are, it wasn't that big of a deal and a lot of people are just picking up on the the quote and making headlines. Um, because I do imagine this is essentially every investor meeting or whatever, like new pitch for a game, groundbreaking, quadruple A, the next evolution, massive multiplayer. Take a hundred million. Yeah. Just you like didn't even finish. all the a hundred million. They're all like, that sounds great. Yeah. Go for it. Um, Neil Druckmann goes into his investor meetings. He's like, guys, so I have this really cool new idea. It's called co-op. It's called co-op intimacy now what is co-op intimacy now oftentimes you guys are probably thinking man i'm gonna go rub one out on my own now but what if that gets lonely now here's a concept what if you and another person who you pay actually do that thing together now it's all legal because it's not prostitution it's co-op intimacy Neil, you literally just invented wow. prostitution. No, that's the I didn't. oldest form of like work. <laughs> it's Neil. co-op intimacy. Give me ten million dollars now. This guy's my boss. <laughs> like, okay. like, it's just it's just big man with, you know, these floaty words, wispy, ethereal. They mean nothing. And I think that's what the gaming industry has realized. For years and years now because like you look back at e3 early on too and really a lot of the announcements were just cgi trailers and stuff but people would still be excited and then eventually got to be more cgi trailers and people were like okay where's the gameplay and now it's cgi trailers but like why aren't you and now it's like a red flag like where's why aren't you showing gameplay sure you can have cgi trailers hype up a game but then you're also you need to also have something else to show or back it up because like we're at the point where like so many gamers are just jaded or like suspicious, rightfully so. And it's like, well, until either the, yeah, I have the game in my hand and I can tell you how it plays or you give me a, a big breakdown. So I'll believe it when I see it. For real. We live in, we live in goofy, goofy gamer times, everyone. Goofy gamer times. The uh-huh. Uh, anything else we wanted to touch on from this list before we uh, go on to some Q&A? Oh, I would also like to say, fuck you, Neil Druckmann, for saying that you're going to be using AI in Naughty Dog games, and it's going to change the way we think about games. Oh, and that it's gonna... Yeah, imagine that's what he means. <laughs> and it's going to be... I mean, he did straight up say, he was like, yeah, dude, AI is going to, AI is going to be amazing for games. It's going to, it's going to allow creatives to focus more on creative storytelling, which is really just him saying, we're going to lay off so many people and save so much money on this AI shit. Let's go. Now, see, games have always had AI. 
So that's why if he's that's talking true. about like enhanced we know what he's talking about. NPC AI, yeah, like sweet. I do think that should be one of the next evolutions of gaming. Oh, 100%. Like, it's gotten pretty stale. I'd love to see an evolution of, you know, NPC, video game, artificial intelligence. But yeah, what they're talking about is using generative AI and all that sort of stuff to just replace people. Yeah. Um, and save money. Yeah. Uh, with some possibly unethical practices. So that's, that's no bueno. Yeah. Absolutely if, deeply unethical practices for sure. But if he's talking about, and I'd love to see with games, like the, the actual you know, NPC behavior and that sort of stuff, sweet. Because we've already had that forever, but people are mixing up those when they hear AI. So. Uh, I saw here you have a Wayfinder listed, Mr. Fruit. Uh, what's going on yeah. over there? Well, I think they announced it uh, a couple days ago. Uh, if you remember Wayfinder, third I person. Uh, well, I don't think you played it, but it was a third person melee focused MMO that was being published by, I believe their name's Digital yeah. Extremes. Yeah, the people who make Warframe. They were helping publish this new studios game called uh, Wayfinder that was going to take a lot of systems and you know, designs, monetization, live service aspects that they do with Warframe, but it was going to be like, like a live service MMO, third person melee combat game. Uh, released into like early access, whatever, a little over like a year ago. And the first couple of days were an absolute disaster between surprise, surprise, like server issues, glitches, uh, errors. And so most people just like tried it, didn't go well, and then they just gave up, rightfully so. Uh, some people tried it, stuck around, but the game didn't really find its footing. It lacked a lot of content. A lot of it was just really grindy, which it obviously took from Warframe. And people just either didn't return or ran out of stuff to do quick or the vision wasn't there. And so player count started dwindling to the point where like average players was like 200. And uh, digital extremes, again, if I'm, could be getting, because I think airship or air whatever are the people making Wayfinder, digital extremes still in publishing. They're like, yo, we're stopped publishing games. We're going to focus on our in game stuff or in house stuff, which is. Warframe, their new game, Soulframe, I believe, those sort of projects. Like, we're done publishing. So then they gave the publishing rights back to the people making Wayfinder. And apparently they're, and this was three months ago, and apparently the vision was to continue to make it this live service MMO game that they wanted it to be. But something happened, who really knows? Maybe they ended up getting no money from the early access publishing because of, I don't know, poor things, blah, blah, blah. Either way, it became... Uh, evident to them that financially they cannot continue to make the game the way they want. So instead, uh, and I think it's like next week, a week from now, they're releasing, re-releasing Wayfinder, but at a box price, single player, although you can invite friends so it's co-op, um, standalone game with all the content, no microtransactions. Hmm. So they went from this giant MMO live service game that they wanted it to be, to saying, all right, well, that's yeah, not yeah. happening. And personally, I like what they're doing. Because as they mentioned too, they essentially had two ways to go about this. Either shut the game down and that's it. Nobody ever yeah. gets to play it, it's done. We're off to the next thing. Or what apparently they've done in the last three months, shift it into a single player standalone game so now people can buy it and play it whenever. You still play co-op with your friends. You won't be able to see players like the main hub town was can support up to like 30 people you know you're going to see people more you won't have that anymore but they talk about now how they've changed progression everything's easier to get new heroes are easier to get all the weapons all the cosmetics all that stuff is now in the game all the contents there feature complete and they talk about how it's now a better game than what's even currently out there and i can appreciate it because they swallowed their pride you know and they're like we still think we have a good game and instead of just pulling the plug and saying, well, whatever, on to the next. GG's. They're, yeah, they're at least giving people a chance and taking all that hard work they did and still at least putting it in there and making it more fun to where it's less grindy. You get to enjoy it more. And like, even when I played Wayfinder, a lot of people pointed out too, anyway, a lot of the MMO or live service, like 
everybody essentially played it like a single player game anyway. You just happen to see some people running around. It doesn't fundamentally change the way you play. The combat's still fun. And they mentioned that like, we're going to do this. We're going to send it out. And no, we don't have any plans on supporting it. Unless it pops off and finds a community again, in which case we would love cool. to continue working on it. <laughs> yeah, because like we like the game, but they're also being realistic. We're like, we'd rather at least get the stuff we have out so people can enjoy it. And we as a studio, if we want to continue to be able to exist, have to move on to our next project. Um, but also, you know, saying that, hey, you know, in, in the rare event that it finds a big audience and people really like it, we'll continue working on it. But I like this approach. And so many games, so many online games, MMOs, all this sort of stuff, just go offline and then you can never play it again. I like this approach of, also, not even just like, well, we're turning the servers up, but you can play single player. Also, tuning the game to now be oriented around a single player uh, experience with progression and all that sort of stuff. Um, whether or not it's successful is to be seen, but I appreciate what they're doing, and I wish other games that were in similar scenarios would do it. Obviously, like they've spent three months working on just this. It's not always feasible. Or just like that, some people are just like, well, this is going to make us like next to no money, so why bother? Put it somewhere else. But I just appreciate, because this is definitely not the norm, and most people just would have been like, ah, well, GG, pull the plug, or whatever. Yeah. Um, but it's clear, like, it's a passion project. They really like what they made. I'm sure they're super bummed about this, but they're still like, well, we, we still just want to get this out there. Um, so... If you want to check it, I think it goes live the 31st. It's like the Echoes update. Um, but either way, whether a lot of people play it or not, um, just a cool thing they're doing. And I just wanted to highlight it. Uh, I, I really, really like that. Uh, Wayfinder is a game that I was immediately interested in, but I, it just didn't grab me the way it grabbed other people. Obviously, not with you. Obviously, there was a lot of problems with it, and in the, in the MMO aspect, um, I know for a lot of people, the well, obviously the connection issues were egregious, um, but it did seem like the end game stuff was pretty fun. Uh, it, it, I can definitely see something being so grindy, but not quite grabbing you in that way, you know turned a lot of people off in addition to the connection issues so uh, that's just catastrophic for everyone all around but um I, i'm glad that they're at least trying to allow the game to have a different life even if even though it may not turn out the way they want it to like that's unbelievably based as hell to essentially be like yeah didn't work the way we wanted to but for the people that really enjoy it and maybe want to just play it, give it another chance without all the crazy connection stuff, uh, you know, here's the full game. So I think that's dope. Yeah. And they're still making it co-op too. So you don't have to play alone. I'm sure there'll be discords or like, if you have friends, you can still play, I think up to three people. I think it's part of the three. Yeah. Um, that's still a possibility, but yeah, I'm with you. The whole thing of like swallowing, like, yep. This is what we thought it would be. Turns out it wasn't, but we're still confident enough that what there is and the there's way we can there. shape it into something else. Yeah, there's something there, and there'll be one way or another some sort of a complete thing that you can play at any time, and it's not just disappearing. Um, but yeah, it's cool. Uh, anything else we want to touch on before Q and A? Oh, uh, rest in peace to Doge. Oh, yeah. um, oh man! We lost Hurt. one of the internet forefathers today. Uh, rest in Doge peace to meme. Doge, ancient uh, meme, and we respect AKA him. K uh, Kabusu. How do you how do you say it? The actual name Kabosu? of the dog, Kabosu. Oh, nice. oh. Um, but the Shiba. Thank you for everything. You're our goat. Rest in peace. 18 have years. It. That's a long while, so. Yeah, I bet uh, I bet him and Harambe are having a good time. You know, they're... They Two deserve legends. it. Yeah. I'm sure Harambe's showing them around. 
Uh, I got a question here from Esquire. Uh, it says, got a question that I heard from Joey's Lock. So to that person who asked me in the comment section for a shout out, if you grew up in Pokemon world, what mon would you use to get uh, to and from school? Or even now to just use to get around? I feel like the no brainer for me is Corviknight. Because it is labeled the transportation mon essentially. So, Are those, Is that like the motorbike one or something? No, Corviknight. It's the big armored crow. It was in uh, Sword and Shield, so right after Sun and Moon, so you would have never seen oh, okay. it. Yeah. It's sick. Uh, one, of the sick, one of their sickest designs. It's cool. I would go... Um, I'm going to say Alakazam, but I'm not going to take away his teleport move. I'm teleporting. Did you just hold on to him? I, I have my own instant instant transmission. Hey, don't hey, don't piss him off because then he'll just get a TP to a volcano True. and be like, "Well, <laughs> maybe um, I'll keep Abra." Abra seems easier to. He he seems like a chill dude. All he knows is teleport anyway. Um, uh, as normie of an answer as it sounds, probably Dragonite, just because you know I could take <laughs> Dragonite's also He's Dragonite's also, also a, a big transport mod. Yeah, he can also. I was gonna say he can like drop some mail off on the way to on the way to school. Dude, what a great DoorDash delivery. Dragonite would absolutely be DoorDashing if uh, if Pokemon were real today. Uh, Pop Kurt. Uh, I'll ask this when Mr. Fruit gets back to him as well. Have you guys uh, been playing the new TFT set? Um, I've only been really playing Double Up with Sid. Uh, She's more into TFT these days than I am. Uh, So whenever I do play TFT, it's mostly Double Up with Sid. Uh, I like the set. It's fun. Um, I was in like a box box thing, but then I literally had to leave for like Denmark, uh, right around the time it came out. Uh, so yeah, it's fun. Um, now that we're about like three or four weeks in, um, I haven't really played much of the like ranked, uh, but I like to say it's definitely not my favorite, uh, but it's better than like the, whatchamacallit headliner uh bullshit that they had last time make sure i have that self for christian uh Caraxi says number one goaded sauce for food imo sweet chili slaps uh there's you can't there's not just one goaded sauce for food yeah you know what i mean you got to be specific goaded sauce for what like it, i don't know like if i'm thinking of something like ranch is like kind of the first thing that comes to my mind i feel like ranch is kind of a a good kind of thing for everything. I guess if we're talking generalist, I am a big hot sauce man, so I will put hot sauce on most things, but um, so many different types of sauce. I guess generalist, as general as I could be on, on as many foods as possible, it would just be, you know, classic tapatio hot sauce, baby. Is ranch considered a sauce? Uh, I think a lot of people definitely use it in the way that you're describing. I would I think ranch definitely can uh, I mean dressing sauce same idea. Uh okay, real quick Mr. Fruit. Uh have you been playing the new TFT set at all? No, actually. I don't know. I played at the release like two games. I don't know. It really caught me or I just I get my TFT moods and I, I don't know, I guess I'm just not in my, mo- my mood yet. And then the uh pair of the 12th uh said number one go to sauce for food. Ooh. See, I said ranch, and then that's where you kind of came in, and we were saying is ranch a sauce? Yeah, I would say I would so. Say, yeah. Okay, then I would I mean, say you, ranch. You can use it as a dressing, but you can use it as a dip. Um, I mean, the one I use most universally, I guess, would be ketchup, but I don't know. It depends on what I'm eating. Like, I, like that's yeah. what Blue was kind of saying. Yeah, am I a Chick Fil A? Well, give me Polynesian. I, I guess I'm just. I you guess know, my. Like, I was like as generalist as possible. What on like just some random random ass food? What would you? And then I guess like hot sauce. That well, welcome to the club, brother. Hell yeah. Yeah. Um, Pop Kurt uh says, "How do you guys keep yourselves motivated to pursue your goals? I find I have a lot of ideas that I want to do in my life, but I can't seem to get myself physically motivated to go and do it." Join the club. 
I get too overwhelmed and I give up. That being said, um, I do try to keep myself on a general schedule of like, okay, like I'm going to like gym is my main motivation right now. Do I have any career aspirations? No, I'm fucked. Everything's dead. We're all screwed. But I do still be going to the gym every now and then. Every now and then, I do be still be going to the gym three, four days a week. Sometimes five if I'm feeling saucy. So, um, you don't have to accomplish everything all at once, but try to try small victories. You know what I mean? And then build up, and you get more and more small victories. Um, and if apply that to the things that you're doing. So, like, if you want to work on something if you want to learn to draw or something, then just be like, okay, like just today I'm going to do like 30 minutes of drawing and then whew, got my drawing out of the day. And then maybe you enjoy it more and more and you do more drawing every day or something. You know what I mean? So greatest advice I think that has ever been bestowed upon this dumb little human race is don't just, don't just like raw dog it from the start. You gotta, you know, take baby steps before you get into the big walking. You can't you can't run before you you crawl on the ground. You know what I mean. So bits and pieces. I think you put that well, Blue. I'm gonna say about probably the same thing you said. Retweet. Here is, here's my list of aspirations and goals. I'd say there's a hundred of them. Uh, one YouTube, nice. Two through one hundred. Nope. <laughs> I'm with you. I got lots of things I'd like to do, but the same way, uh, like right now I'd say it's like YouTube gym, eating well, currently mainly in the eating well, trying to get back into that. Um, but like blue said, and the way, the way you do it is like tomorrow, if I didn't have anything and I want to do that, I'm not gonna be like, all right, well tomorrow I'm starting YouTube. I'm going to the gym and I'm eating better. Never going to work. Focus on one. Yeah. And then once one becomes like a habit, like I'm able to continue to do YouTube because it's what I've done daily for the past 10 years. So that's just my daily schedule. The gym, been trying to get back in. Even when I was, couldn't quite do weights, I still did some cardio, but I'm at the point where like, and actually at the last six days, five days have been weight training, which has been my best in a while. So that feels good. Uh, and then once I get all that back down, I sometimes fall in and out of eating well. And that's like, okay, now I'll start working on eating well a little bit. No. And inevitably, I'll lose out on some of that. You just get back, but then slowly, like, you know, I was doing like the, okay, well, I have most of this. Let's try to learn to draw a little bit. And then some of them come through. You'll lose some over time. But yeah, the my thing is always pick one thing, slowly do that. And then once that becomes second nature, that's when you start throwing something else in rotation. It's really easy too when you start something and then you get a lot of motivation and energy. You're like, oh, well, I'm also going to start adding. Why don't I do this and this? You got to stop yourself uh, because that's how you end up putting too many things on your plate. Get one thing going, get motivated, get that in order. Next thing. Uh. MC534 says, what is your guys' main objective slash personal purpose in life? I.e. having fun, help others, something spiritual, etc. Uh, not die um, and uh, live uh, financially enough to where I don't want to kill myself every day and uh, play video games. That's my higher calling. Um, I'd probably say just enjoy like everything that i'm doing in every aspect like enjoying my relationship enjoying my relationship with like my family like enjoying my relationship with like my work and my friends and all that kind of stuff and thankfully i'm maintaining all that so just kind of try and maintain that and just live a, a normal life as much as i can um i'd say i'm still looking for mine especially the past couple years um at least with what I do, I've always wanted to be uh, an escape for people. But as a whole in my life, I'm trying to figure out what 
just being happy looks like. That's all I need. I'm satisfied and happy. It could look like anything. And that's what I'm trying to find out is what what makes me happy. Uh, so, yeah, I don't really have an answer. Still, still trying to figure it out. Uh, Jay Bruckett uh, says, my question is simply, when are the four members of the Dream Team going to be playing Baldur's Gate 3? The four members of the Dream Team? <sighs> it's Joey's in that. All right, let's not give him too much credit. Let's be real here. There's three members of the Dream Team and Joey's the intern. At what point do Still, we hire somehow. him? We don't. <laughs> That's the secret. For tax reasons, it gets messy. Oh. Um, uh, uh, well, I I have been... Uh, I just don't know when. I know I've uh, talked about doing a Baldur's Gate 3 playthrough because I think it'd be fun. Um, need to find the time because the problem is like... Who knows? It might take like 100 hours. And if it's like... If we approached it like a D and D session, because the problem yeah. is you need four people, all show oh, up, yeah, and be prepared to play for a couple hours, and pretty regularly, yeah. Uh, so I feel like it'd have to be either two of one of two ways, where it's like, it's like rust, where it's like boys buckle down the next two weeks. Every day we're playing three's on the menu. Three. Yeah, we are like we're either just gonna get through it. Or it's like, you know, like a D&D session or something where it's like, all right, guys, Thursdays, 4 to 8 p.m., Baldur's Gate 3. And then we'd slowly chip away at it. But that's currently the the uh, thing I'm trying to figure out if we can make it happen. And also, probably this can't happen anyway until after my surgery just because I just don't have the time to yeah. get a lot of stuff started. But I, w I would like to. I think it would be fun, especially since... I'd want to get uh, the three people I play with ideally haven't played it because at that point, Claire and I are almost done with our playthrough. So I want everyone else to be blind, essentially. Me not help anybody. And also, uh, aside from Claire and I's playthrough, I still haven't looked stuff up. Yeah. So I just know there'll still be tons I mean, of... There's so much you haven't like done that, even though yeah. like you're... There'll be tons of stuff that we run into or decisions that are made to alter things and if we do it i also want to play on what's the what's the word um honor mode yes thanks mike uh honor mode where you can't reroll at all uh because people scum so like honor mode is well one it's also the hardest uh so we would as soon as you die uh you lose like you the honor mode's done so we would do honor mode, uh, and then if we die, we just technically don't have a complete honor mode, but we're going to continue playing because it'll let you continue your save. It's just when you beat the game. If you beat an honor mode without ever dying, you get, like, cool dice. But we'll just keep playing mainly for the challenge and also the inability to reroll to make... Cause it makes things way more interesting. Um, so, yeah. I think it would make for some interesting content, but, yeah. When uh, it will happen, I'm not sure. We'll end on this question. Uh, what conspiracy theory are you absolutely convinced is the truth? Holy shit. <sighs> uh, the jab? No. Um, <laughs> I don't really know. I'm not like a big like conspiracy head guy. Like my, I know my stepbrother uh, would be like all over this. Yeah, um, I'm, yeah I'm going to have to like, look up. I mean, like I'm kind of, that's what I'm doing. Uh, I mean, the JFK assassination is kind of weird. Um, I do believe in like a new world order or just the idea of like a group of like selected individuals who like me. I don't think it goes as far as like they sacrifice humans and shit like that. But like, I do think there is like a group of billionaires and trillionaires that are like, Hey, like, here's what is the news in the alien world or something like that. A um, secret select group of of extremely rich people who control every aspect of our life versus the normal 
group of public rich people who control every aspect of our life. <laughs> Agree. Yeah, exactly. Uh, like I do like the, how people look at the Clintons, like how like you crazy right wing people look at the Clintons. Like, I think there are somebody like the Clintons in the world, but it's somebody who you would never know and a name you would never know. Like, it's just somebody random person type of beat. Um, and yeah, so I'm looking through some of them. Some of them are just wilder. I, I don't have like, <laughs> there's some uh, crazy ass ones. I don't have strong opinions one way or the other. So I'll just say, yeah, you uh, told me you loved uh, You thought QAnon had some good <laughs> points to it. I think I remember oh, on, back man. in like 2020, um, I think on January 6th specifically, you said, you know, like, I think this sorry, is... I'm busy. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, can't, uh, I'm out of state. Um, uh, I guess, is it technically a conspiracy theory? I don't really know. Uh, we live in a simulation. Okay, so like a matrix. I go with that thing. one. Yeah. We're, uh, we're just some codes to somebody else. Um, but I think the main thing about that is uh, probably you'd never be able to prove it. Uh, sure. And there's like no harm and and also believing that like doesn't hurt anybody. Um I think I think the only conspiracy I do think is probably real is that we have probably actually come into contact with aliens but because but like our governments aren't ready to tell us because okay so like men in black type out. beat i i do think i do think we've already made contact with with some aliens we just that'd be rad they just don't want us to they're just not going to tell us got to keep it on the down low or the aliens men in black is tight or the aliens themselves have been like hey like don't yeah they're like, telling everyone about this like this is like you guys are kind of dumb it's not going to go well yeah it's like in Men in Black when he says, a person is smart, people are dumb, reactive, you know. Uh, so, yeah, uh, that'll do it for the GG Over Easy podcast. You guys know now know our conspiracies. We're all living in a simulation in Mr. Fruit's world. We're all living in a phantom tax. So if that's, uh, if that's the case, uh, we're going to take your phantom tax and ask for you to click that like button if you've made it this far into the video and the podcast, if you enjoyed it. Uh, please leave it a, a rating if you're yeah, yeah please leave a review on your favorite listening podcast it helps the podcast out more than you could think uh please engage with the ads and shit it helps a lot too more than you could know i uh, appreciate you guys all listening and hanging out today check out the patreon we'll see you guys all next week peace out